look at what book I found. When we left school, we were in the middle of our point of view unit and we had to read The Day the Crayons Quit and we never got to read this one, but today's the day, yay. The Day the Crayons Came Home by Drew DeWalt and Oliver Jeffers. Today is Sunday and it is such a rainy day. We're all gonna be stuck inside all day. Elizabeth and I are baking cookies for her college bound friends and we're gonna decorate them with the letters of the schools they're going to. This is the music room, which I think Sarah sent a video of her reading. She was sitting at the piano over there. Above it is a map of the national parks. We put a pin on every national park that we have visited and we write on the little circle on the pin to mark the year we went there. And next to it is another painting of national park symbols. So welcome to my music room. We call it the music room because this is where the kids practice their piano, their saxophone, their, we have a trumpet player, we have a clarinet player here. So sometimes they play the ukulele or the guitar. They like the music. Anyway, on to the day the crayons came home. One day, Duncan and his crayons were happily coloring together when a strange stack of postcards arrived from him for him in the mail. That one says, hello from the rug. Dear Duncan, not sure if you can remember me. My name is Maroon Cran. You only colored with me once to draw a scab, but whatever, with Anyway, you lost me two years ago in the couch. Then your dad sat on me and broke me in half. I never would have survived had Paperclip not nursed me back to health. I'm finally better, so come get me. And can Paperclip come too? He's really holding me together. Sincerely, your marooned crayon, maroon crayon. And here he is, look at the picture. Dad sitting on the crayon and here's maroon crayon fastened back together by a paper clip. And there's the postcard I just read. Dear Duncan, no one likes peas. No one li even likes the color pea green. So I'm changing my name and running away to see the world. Sincerely, Esteban, the Magnificent, the crayon formerly known as pea green. Look, there's a little boy hating the peas. And here he is, Esteban. Esteban is the Spanish name for Steven. Hi, Duncan. It's me, Neon Red Crayon. Remember that great vacation we had with your family? Remember how we laughed when we drew a picture of your dad's sunburn? Remember dropping me by the hotel pool when you left? Clearly, you do not, because I'm still here. How could you miss me? Anyway, after eight months waiting for you to come get me, I guess I'm walking back. Your left behind friend, Neon Red. And there he is by the pool, <laughs> looking sad. Oh, this one's hard to read. Duncan, it's us, yellow and orange. We know we used to argue about which of us was the color of the sun, but guess what? Neither of us wants to be the color of the sun anymore. Not since we were left outside and the sun melted us together. You know, the real color of the sun, hot. That's what, we're sorry for arguing. You can make green the sun for all we care. Just bring us home. You're not so sunny friends, yellow and orange. There they are, melting together in the green sun. It was hard to read the yellow crayon. Dear Duncan, I'm sure you don't recognize me after the horrors I've been through. I think I was tan crayon or maybe burnt sienna. I don't know, I can't tell anymore. Have you ever been eaten by a dog and puked up on the living room rug? because I have, I have been eaten by a dog and puked up on the rug, Duncan, and it's not pretty, not pretty at all. I'm more carpet fuzz than crayon now. Can you please bring me back? 
your undigested friend, Tan, or possibly burnt Sienna Cran. There's the dog licking himself. There's the crayon in a pile of puke. Yuck. Dearest Duncan, um, could you please open the front door? I still need to see the world. Sincerely, Esteban the Magnificent. Remember Esteban? He's waiting to go out the big door. He's got his little stick in his pouch like a hobo. Esteban. Oh, look at this one. Hey, Duncan. Remember last Halloween we told your little brother there was a ghost under the basement stairs? Then we drew that scary stuff on the wall. Sure was funny when he ran screaming, right? But it wasn't so funny when you forgot to take me out of the basement. Please come get me. I'm kind of terribly horrified. Your scared friend. Glow in the dark. Cran. I remember when we visited the Crayola factory a long, long time ago, and they had so many neat crayons to buy there, including glow-in-the-dark ones and glitter ones. I think they're easier to find now, but it was before you could find them in the stores. They were so great. Dear Duncan, looks like I'm almost home. Been through China, Canada, and France, I think. Just crossing New Jersey by camel now. New Jersey has giant pyramids, right? See you soon, neon red crayon. P.S. Next stop, the North Pole, I think. Now, you should check a map because China is nowhere near Canada, is nowhere near France, is nowhere near Egypt, and certainly not near the North Pole. There he is. And we know that those pyramids are not in New Jersey. Duncan, does page eight of Pirate Island ring a bell? Kind of a big payday for Captain Greenbeard there, don't you think? And no bronze or silver in that pile, huh? I told you I'd make it would make me blunt if you colored each coin individually. But would you listen? No. I also told you those stupid crayon sharpeners never work. Did you listen to that? Also, no. Now I can't color anything at all. Your pointless friend, gold crayon. Here's the gold crayon stuck in the sharpener. It says, I had to write it for him. So Pencil wrote the note. This is not fun for me either, you know. And over here, we've got the pirate on top of the gold coins. All the gold coins. And a boy walking the plank. Dear Duncan, I've seen the world. It's rainy. I'm coming back. Esteban the Magnificent. Duncan's two Duncan, all of these say two Duncan's bedroom upstairs this house. Here he is. He didn't even go outside. He opened the door and too rainy. Kind of looks like today. Dear Duncan, you're probably wondering why my head is stuck to your sock. A question I ask myself every day. Well, it's because last week you left me in your pocket and I ended up in the dryer. I landed on your sock and now he's stuck to my head. Can you please come get me? Also, why does everything you wear still smell even after it's washed? Your stinky, socky, stucky on my heady buddy, turquoise crayon. P.S. Sock says hi. Here's the dryer in the background. And the sock is saying, tell them I said hi. You should ask um, your parents or whoever does your laundry if you've ever put something in the wash by accident in your pocket. I know my kids have put crayons, pens, different kinds of pens, it matters which kind, causes different kind of damage. They've put gum, that's pretty bad. Um, what else have they washed? Things like tissues, those are easy, sticky notes. Gum might be the worst. Chocolate one time went through. It wasn't pretty. Dear Mr. Duncan, I know I'm not your crayon. I know I belong to your baby brother, but I can't take him anymore. In the last week alone, he's bitten the top of my head, put me in the cat's nose, drawn on the wall, and tried to color garbage with me. The worst part is he is a terrible artist. I can't tell what his drawings are. Donkeys? Monkeys? 
Donkeys, monkeys? Picasso said, every child is an artist, but I don't know. Picasso was one of the most famous contemporary artists in the world. He was from Spain and Spain or France? I think he was from Spain. Anyway, I don't think he met your brother. Please rescue me, your desperate friend, big, chunky, toddler crayon. Look at the kids' drawings. If you look up Picasso, you would find his most famous piece. It's called Guernica. I actually saw it on, when I went to Spain when I was in high school and was an exchange student. But look at this big, fat, chunky crayon with a bite out of him. If you look up this famous piece of art by Picasso or any art by Picasso, you would see that it looks a lot like this. Duncan. Greetings from the Amazon rainforest, making great time. I think I'm almost home, neon red crayon. Look at the postcard. Does that look like the Amazon rainforest to you? I think it looks like snowboarding in the Rocky Mountains or something. Hello, Duncan, it's me, brown crayon. You know exactly why I ran away, buddy? Everyone thinks I get all the great coloring jobs, candy bars, puppies, ponies, lucky me, right? Bet they don't know what else you used me to color, do they? I didn't think so. The rest of that drawing was great, but did it really need that final brown scribble? I'll come back, but please, let's stick to candy bars, okay? Your very embarrassed friend, Brown Crayon. Bear Goes in the Wood is the title of his painting or his coloring. And I think you can see why Brown Crayon was so upset about the last edition and the title of the drawing. Oh, here's our last page. Look at all the postcards. Or we're getting close to the end anyway. Duncan was sad to learn of all the crayons he'd lost, forgotten, broken or neglected over the years, so he ran around gathering them up. But Duncan's crayons were all so damaged and differently shaped than they used to be that they no longer fit in the crayon box. So Duncan had an idea. He built a place where each crayon would always feel at home. Hmm, I gotta figure out how I can share this with you and show you the picture. There's no dogs down there, are there? That's the tan crayon who got eaten and thrown up. Nope, no turkeys either. Oh, you flatter me, but it's not real chocolate. That's the brown one. Let's have a party. I don't know, that's a glow in the dark one. Here's a stubby one, here's pink, but it's not really blue, more like lilac. This one is from my blue period. She drew a stick figure. More sure, make sure it's straight. They're talking up here as they're drawing. Over here, oh, we have underpants. Who are you wearing? Ooh, I think he goes by Ted. I'm Ted because the turquoise crayon is wearing the sock and the underpants are asking who he's wearing. Um, ooh, look at this rainbow marker crayon thing. Looks good, lads. Hope there's not a metal detector. That's the one in the sharpener. No, I think everyone is welcome. There's the paperclip guy, Maroon. Ah, uh, there you are, I could use a haircut. He wants to see the sharpener. And down here, I think that door is for us and it's a double door with orange and yellow on it for them to go through. That's everybody. There's Duncan's special crayon box. So that all of his odd shaped crayons had a place to go. Here's our neon crayon. And this is Cleveland. I got to hike the Great Wall of China. He's telling stories to Esteban and the neon crayon. That's all. I will show you the back page, which has neon red crayon holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Look, the Leaning Tower made another appearance. We saw it last week in Anthony, Big Anthony, his story. Anyway, how fun to finally get to hear the day the crayons came home.
We didn't get to finish our point of view story. So as you're reading stories on Edmentum or you listen to these, think about the point of view. What point of view is the story written from? This one, each postcard was written from the point of view of the crayon and it was written in first person point of view. But the parts that told us about Duncan right in the beginning and at the end are in third person point of view. Like when it says one day Duncan and his crayons were happily coloring together. That's in third person point of view. It has clue words too, like him and Duncan. So think about it as you read stories, as I read stories, let's think about the point of view that it's written in and not forget what we learned. Have a great Sunday. I miss you.